political motive or agenda. I did it out of deep concern that if the Bidens were to come to power, the country would be facing the same traumatic Russian collusion scandal, only this time with China. Now you want to ask yourself, why did the government dispatch to Europe so many people? Why six? Why not two? The answer is that they knew very well that I'm a credible witness and that I have insider knowledge about the group and the individuals that enrich the Biden family. I, who volunteered to inform the U.S. government about potential security breach and about compromising information about a man vying to be the next president, am now being hunted by the very same people who I informed and may have to live on the run for the rest of my life. This is Gal Luft. If his name doesn't ring a bell, that's because a few weeks before he was scheduled to testify before Congress in an explosive testimony about the Biden's corruption case, Mr. Gal went missing. Where exactly did he go? And what incriminating information did he have against the Biden family? For four years, I was senior advisor to the China energy company CFC, at the same time of its dealings with the Biden family. Under normal circumstances, I would be testifying before Congress about my experience with CFC. Sadly, due to circumstances I shall describe here in this video, uh, I am forced to tell you the story via video. In March 2019, Gal Luft heard a rumor that Joe Biden was running for office. The thought didn't sit right with him because of the secrets he knew about the Biden family while working with CEFC, an energy company in China, the same company that the Biden family had dealings with. Gal Luft couldn't sit on his hands and do nothing about what he knew, so he informed the United States government that he had information that would expose the Biden family for corruption. Now, in case you were wondering, this is not a partisan attempt to destroy the the Biden family. Gal doesn't identify as a republic or a democrat. He is simply a man who cares about his country. Unfortunately for Gal, his country didn't care about him. At the time there were rumors that Joe Biden was planning to run for president. I saw it as my civic duty to alert the government beforehand and give it enough time to probe the issue. I want to be clear. I'm not a republican. I'm not a democrat. I have no political motive or agenda. The same month that Gal learned about Joe Biden running for the highest office, he secured a meeting with the Department of Justice, or DOJ. The DOJ sent two prosecutors and four FBI agents to meet up with Gal at the U.S. Embassy in Brussels. Gal thought he was helping the American government investigate a family that could potentially gain control of the highest office in the land. But by the end of the meeting, Gal would discover how wrong he was. The meeting in Brussels was long and intense. Mr. Gal Luft provided provided in-depth information on the Biden family's corruption to the officials, including specifics such as dollar figures that were paid to the Biden family. Gal knew he was potentially putting himself on the line of fire, but he didn't care. To him, he didn't have a choice. It was his civic duty. As I said, it was in March of 2019, in a two-day uh, session with the U.S. Embassy in Brussels. I did it out of deep concern that if the Bidens were to come to power, the country would be facing the same traumatic Russia collusion. So in a two-day meeting, he divulged all he knew to the officials. He informed them that CEFC, the Chinese state-controlled energy company, paid $100,000 a month to Hunter Biden and $65,000 to his uncle Jim. And in exchange, the Biden family supplied them with their FBI connection. These payments were made through Rob Walker. According to Gal, Rob Walker is the Biden family's bag man. I also provided the name of Rob Walker who later became known as Hunter Biden's Pardon. Today, the House Oversight Committee released its findings following a months-long investigation into Hunter Biden and his family. Chairman James Comer alleges the Biden family received millions of dollars from foreign entities in Romania and China. But that's not all. The CEFC was also allowed to use the Biden name to promote China's Belt and Road Initiative around the world. The Belt and Road Initiative is a global infrastructure development strategy adopted by the Chinese government in 2013 to invest in more than 150 countries and international organization. Gal also informed the officials of something rather alarming, something that had the power to topple the entire security system. He informed them there was a mole in the FBI. But perhaps the most alarming information I revealed was of a mole within the DOJ who shared classified information with Hunter Biden and 
his Chinese partners. I told the DOJ that Hunter was closely associated with a very senior retired FBI official. But he didn't just stop there. He also told the official specifics about this mole that should have made it easy for him to be caught. That is, if the FBI wanted to. But as you'll soon learn, that was not exactly the plan. Gao told the officials he met with in Brussels that the FBI mole was called one eye because he only had one eye. Who had distinct physical characteristics. He had one eye. One of the FBI agents at the time even told me, you know, that would be very easy for us to find. There aren't that many one-eyed people in the bureau. This one-eyed guy had used his position in the FBI to tip off the Biden family business partners in CEFC, Patrick Ho and Yi Jianmeng, that they were being investigated. You see, Patrick Ho and Yi Jianmeng and one other person had been named in a sealed indictment. They were being indicted for bribery and corruption. And according to Gao Luft, the information one Eye provided the CEFC officials allowed them to make a run for it before the FBI could bring them in. Gao said Yi Jianmeng immediately ran back to China, where he paid Hunter Biden one million dollars to be his private counsel. Patrick Ho also paid money to have Hunter and Jim Biden help him as he flew to Hong Kong to escape prosecution. And according to what Patrick Ho told Gal Luft, Hunter and Jim Biden flew to Hong Kong in the fall of 2017 to meet with Ho. At the time Gal Luft was just telling the DOJ and FBI officials what he knew, little did he know that a couple of months later, all the information he provided to the officials in Brussels would be confirmed in Hunter Biden's laptop. It's a story with suggestions of a scandal, one that could threaten a presidency. At its center is a laptop. The computer belongs to Hunter Biden, son of Joe, the U.S. president. The information I provided the FBI in March of 2019, was fully corroborated nine months later when the famous laptop belonging to Hunter Biden, which contained all the emails and receipts, was handed to the FBI. Email receipts of Hunter Biden booking a one-way first-class flight to Hong Kong on August 25, 2017, as well as a return flight from Koh Samai in Thailand to Baltimore, Washington Airport on September 8, 2017. Now, there's no reason the information provided by Gao Luft shouldn't be taken seriously, especially because Gao Luft is no ordinary man. Gao Luft is an Israeli-American professor at Ostom in Turkey, who also worked as a co-director at the Institute of the Analyst of Global Security. After receiving a PhD in psychology at John Hopkins University in Maryland, he was appointed senior advisor at the U.S. Energy Security Council in 2011. He was also the chairman of International Privacy Machines. Everyone who knows Gal Luft in Washington, D.C. describes him as a credible person with deep intelligence ties. He founded and ran an energy think tank, which had as its advisors top directors in the intelligence sector, like former CIA Director James Woolsey and former NSA Director Robert McFarland. So it was no doubt that Gal Luft is well plugged into Washington. I have verified that he was partners with uh, the, the very Chinese from CEFC that um, Hunter Biden and his uncle Jim Biden were receiving money from, millions of dollars. Um, and so I, I guess he had the access to be able to know that information. However, the officials Gal Luft met in Brussels did not completely believe him, which is not something they can be faulted for. But nine months later, when the FBI was handed Hunter Biden's laptop, they had a means of confirming everything Gal Luft told them. But what happened next is something that shocked Gal Luft to his core. While Gal was waiting for the FBI to investigate his claims, the FBI and DOJ were doing something else entirely. They were plotting to take Gal down. After Brussels, I never heard back from the DOJ. But instead of showing appreciation for my whistleblower, I became public enemy number one. For the next four years, Gal Luft, his family, friends, and associates were hunted by the very people he trusted with information that could have broken the Biden family ties case wide open. He and his family were harassed and intimidated in an effort to scare him into withdrawing his claims. Me, my family, my friends, my associates, we were all harassed, intimidated, and finally, I was prosecuted. 
But Gal didn't scare so easy. He maintained his claims and continued to wait for Congress to invite him to give his testimony. In 2020, just to be sure that people in the DOJ actually received the information he provided, Gal sent his lawyer to Washington to meet with then-acting Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue. Gal heard that his information had been received and an investigation had started. But unknowing to Gal, the Attorney General's office had decided to suspend the investigation on the Biden family because it was too close to the election. It definitely is a serious set of allegations. They should have been investigated and it appears yet again that they weren't. He would be the fifth whistleblower whose allegations about the Bidens were not, were just buried by the DOJ. But that's not even the worst part. What happened after that was not something Gal saw coming. On November 1st, 2022, seven days before the midterm election, Gal Luft was indicted. And why did the DOJ choose to unseal to the, the indictment on November 1st, 2022, the very same week of the midterm elections? Did this have anything to do with the fact, the fear that once Republicans gain control over Congress and begin to investigate, their cover-up would be in full display? Now, the strange part of this story is that the entire time Gal Luft was in Israel, where he lived, the DOJ did not try to extradite him. Even though the United States has an extradition agreement with Israel, the DOJ waited patiently for Gal to leave Israel before signing an extradition order. Gal would discover that it was the same people he met with in Brussels that signed his extradition order. And in February 2023, when Gal Luft left Israel for Cyprus, he was arrested immediately. Luff's threat to name names comes after his arrest in Cyprus on February 16th on charges that he illegally sold weapons to Libya and China. Now, Luff says that the United States is seeking his extradition as part of a politically motivated payback over his exposure of the Biden family. He was then hit with five charges relating to the Arms Expert Control Act of conspiring to sell Chinese products to the United Arab Emirates, Kenya, and Libya. While Gao was detained in Cyprus, the international media slammed him for being an international arms dealer, even though there was no proof that he ever traded a bullet in his life. So that, a lot of that is sketchy, I should just say. Say, that does not, um, um, him but being the arms dealers, the election him being arrested on those charges doesn't sketchy. make immediately make me go, oh, okay. let's be honest, they're just trying to stick him with something. Finally, in February this year, I was arrested in Cyprus on an expedition request from the Southern District of New York, the very same office that met with me uh, in Brussels. The seven count indictment said I violated the export, uh, Arms Export Control Act. And if I am convicted, I would face up to 100 years in prison. Nowhere in my indictment, the DOJ claimed or presented evidence that I bought, sold, shipped, or financed any weapons. Gal Luft was also hit with a violation of the Foreign Agencies Registration Act. FARA. The DOJ claims that he was acting as an unregistered agent of the CEFC. Gal Luft was also accused of paying former CIA Director James Woolsey $6,000 so the former director would put his name on a paper Gal had written for Chinese media. But surprisingly enough, nowhere in the indictment does it mention that James Woolsey had been an advisor of his think tank since 2002. Nor does it mention the fact that the paper Gal Luff wrote does not actually represent any Chinese interests. The notion that I, Gal Luft, spoon fed a CIA director with policy proposals on China, treating him like a useful idiot, is not only an insult to the intelligence community is an insult to the intelligence of every American. Now pay close attention here. This next part will shock you. Gal Luft was accused of being a foreign agent because of his relationship with CEFC. The DOJ is claiming that the CEFC is affiliated with Chinese intelligence and an international criminal organization. Now what is interesting is that CEFC is registered in the state of Virginia as a charitable organization. The question here is, why would the government allow CEFC to register its operations in America if they truly believe if they were affiliated with Chinese intelligence? And also, why would the government allow Americans to donate money to this charitable organization if they knew they were indirectly funding an international criminal organization? These questions were not answered in the indictment, nor have they been answered by the government. Gal Luft was also charged with making false statements in Brussels, despite the fact that his claims have been corroborated by other whistleblowers and Hunter Biden's laptop. But the worst part is, when the media
meeting in Brussels was being scheduled, Gao Luft was assured in a letter by the DOJ that he would not be arrested for the information he was about to give them. So why did the tone change? At this point, it seems the government is using the CEFC to bring charges against Gao Luft with one clear intention in mind. To keep him from testifying against the Biden family and their shady dealings with the CEFC. But this is where it gets interesting. If Gal Luft can be brought up on FARA charges for his dealings with the CEFC, shouldn't the Biden family also be brought up on similar charges? Because they too have been proven to have had dealings with CEFC. Uh, there's of course evidence that the president interacted with his relatives, associates from China, uh, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Ukraine. Uh, so what do you say to the majority of Americans who believe that the president is himself corrupt? After Gal Luft was arrested and detained in Cyprus, the House Oversight Committee caught wind of him and decided to invite him for an interview. But then, Gal vanished. Nobody knew where Gal Luft was or what happened to him until a tweet on his account went viral on social media. I've been arrested in Cyprus on a politically motivated extradition request by the U.S. The U.S. is claiming I'm an arms dealer. It would be funny if it weren't tragic. I've never been an arms dealer. DOJ is trying to bury me to protect Joe, Jim, and Hunter Biden. So, where exactly is Gal Luft? It turns out Gal had to run for his life because he didn't think he was going to receive a fair trial in Washington. This is because the CEFC agent Patrick Yeo, who was eventually caught and charged in a New York court in 2018, was not allowed to implicate the Bidens in any way in his defense. The very same prosecutor who is now after me, Daniel Reichenthal, told the judge at the time that mentioning the name Biden would quote, add a political dimension to the case. And the judge agreed. And if Gal Luft is not allowed to mention what he knows about the Bidens, how is he expected to defend himself? He would not be allowed to utter the word Brussels or Biden. In the real context of my arrest, me being patient zero, the Biden family investigation, would be hidden from the jury. But now that Gal Luft is on the run, is he still going to testify in front of Congress? Well, the House Oversight Chairman, James Comer, who is preparing to interview Luft before he disappeared, says he remains a potential witness in the Biden family investigation, despite the fact that he is a fugitive at this moment. <laughs>